that I didn't know existed. And again, it's pretty decent to check out this stuff. Dream Festival team because I got all this stuff that I want to add to my list. That I'm going to do next year. So it's called Stone Techno Festival, and it's based in this place called Essen in flipping um, in Germany. And if I'm not if I'm not confused. I think the nearest airport, I think, might be like Dusseldorf or some shit, right? Um, so, but I know Essen has a football football club or whatever, maybe. But I'm not really too familiar with Germany outside of Berlin and Frankfurt because those are two places I've actually been to. Um, and obviously, I want to go to Munich. But there's this festival called Essen. And one thing that's amazing about it is the location that I want to talk about. The location is fucking incredible. It's in this like weird industrial factory looking place. Um, and it's, there's bits of it that are kind of open air. So you kind of see the sky as you're raving. But it looks like the quintessential place where you would go and listen to techno music. This looks like the place where you should listen to that sort of music in that sort of space. And they host like one day, two day type of festivals. And I legitimately, legitimately, legitimately love it. Like it looks really, really, really freaking cool. And I really want to kind of add it to my list of festivals to go to. This website or this Instagram page called The Third Room, um, I think are the people that maybe manage it or something i'm not really too sure how that kind of works um but the festival itself is called stone techno festival right and as you can see here there's loads of fucking big industrial factory looking pipes and you know sculptures and sculpt sorry um structures and shit and whatnot it kind of looks like uh you know chernobyl in some respects um it's obviously clearly abandoned but I feel like this is the pretty much perfect place to kind of experience um, techno in all its kind of guises and all its kind of ways. And I feel like how it kind of looks for me is the main selling point of why I would kind of want to go there. And as you can see here, there's a picture of what looks like, um, it looks like sort of like basically like a factory. Don't get me wrong. Basically, it kind of looks like print works. And there's a bit here that kind of looks open where I think it was raining over the weekend at the recent Stone Music Festival. And all of this place in the middle here was full of water. And there was DJs playing at the back here. So you've got people playing and it's got the backdrop of this amazing sort of factory looking out on it. It looks really, really fucking cool. Let's just see the comment here, Percy of the review. Somebody posted here on the comments. Eskia Production says, Festival location is insane. Music was world class, crowd was top notch. However, in England, everyone knows Germany as being a country with the best organizational skills in Europe. Okay, you can't hate and then start sucking off. Or you can't suck off and then hate. But hey, let's continue. But this festival was sadly the opposite in this regard. So, here is some constructive feedback to make next year's event even more enjoyable. Look at this person. Es this is are they involved in the industry? They look like they're trying to, like, you know, give some criticism, obviously, but also try and throw their hat in the ring to get a job. Interesting. Let's, let, let me actually look in it. Let's just check it out here. They said, nobody should have to queue for 45 minutes to get a drink token unless an online prepayment system like Sonar where you can top up your credit before the festival begins and also refund online. To be fair to this person, though, or to be fair to the festival, every festival I've been at, with the exception of maybe one, the queue to get drinks is always crazy is always crazy so this is not really that surprising to be fair and to be fair it's kind of part of the fun of festivals the, the long queues the shitty toilets like that kind of adds to the whole kind of vibe personally as good as long as the sound is good for me i don't really care about the rest of it as long as the stages are well kind of you know designed and located and whatnot all the other things like you know long queues at the bar uh, the toilets being shitty whatever i'm not really too bothered about uh, another criticism even if you don't use online system for vouchers get rid of the completely inefficient current system where the waiters have to calculate and cross out numbers on a voucher card this makes bar service even slower should be a simple system like one token one beer or two token spirit mix yeah that's really weird that's really strange to be fair that's a good point they're having to fucking do algebra and shit to work out how much you've used that's a bit strange it should just be what he said most festivals are like that they'll give you fucking um you know, what's the thing called? Casino fucking, what's it called? Chips or whatever. And you use those. Usually whatever color corresponds to one is one, whatever is two is two, and you go from there. Um, or you just use them, you know, based on the token amount. It continues, it says, bar service needs to be drastically improved. You can tell this person's a Brit, right? You can tell this person's a Brit. The one thing they're complaining about is the bar. You can tell that we're British people. We like to fucking drink. 
you go into a festival instead of going there to listen to the music and dance your face off and meet loads of interesting people and get on it and stuff he's complaining the most thing about i couldn't get me drinks couldn't get fucking drunk mate i fucking love it um bar service need to be the, the travel um travel home from the festival was shambles very unsafe you need at least four shuttle buses an hour and also the team up with the local cab service so you can have a taxi stand and it again this is all whatever man getting to a festival is always whatever getting home is always the fucking nightmare it's part of the fun you get to fucking calm down you get to fucking chill sleep whatever you know find out you lost your wallet all those things are fun so I feel like these these complaints are a little bit little bit much to be completely honest. I'm gonna quickly play here an after movie from it. It was like the type of thing that I'll remember until the day I die, probably. This day was actually something different than I expected. So I came to the festival and I saw Adriana playing. I knew she would smash it and I walked by and everyone's happy and sun shining. I said, did you see what's happening in the sky? The minute I arrived, it started raining and it was like, okay, well, maybe it's gonna pull over, you know? It did not pull over. <laughs> so yeah, for me, it happened in the plane. I had to hold on in the air, not to get into the storm. All right, everyone has to leave. Everything's canceled. So everybody had to evacuate and nobody knew if we could restart or not. I was still like, okay, my set is done, you know, because it was pouring rain when I had to perform. And then the message slowly started to spread like, hey, we're gonna actually start up again. And seeing a wall of people run towards the stage, it's like an image that I'll probably never forget for the rest of my life. And then the moment moment it restarted it's like a triple excitement from everybody and i looked around and i took my hand up and i was waving to people like thank you like thank you for staying with us and make this happen because without them there was also nothing to be honest it was like the best set of my life i don't think it could have happened this way without everything that happened around it you know what i mean So it looks pretty fun to me. I don't really mind it. People are calling um, Narcissus over here, who's really one of the best DJs out there, to be fair. They're calling him Paris Hilton, which is fucking hilarious. But um, yeah, um, as you can hear from them, there was a little bit of some complications happening because essentially they had torrential rainstorms, it looks like. It was fucking pelting it down by you know all considerations and they had to kind of cancel it temporarily because i'm assuming for some health and safety reasons which is kind of not really the norm in most european festivals if it rains people just soldier through we are fucking known to love a good party in the fucking rain we don't really give a fuck so people are more than happy to stay and chill whatever it may be so when festivals do try and cancel or postpone things because of rain people usually get quite upset that's the funny thing about it. People don't mind actually chilling and fucking hanging out. So the fact that they had to cancel it, I'm sure people weren't too happy about and probably kind of threw their toys out of the pram about. But um, in true European fashion, in true German fashion, in true you know, fashion with techno fans in general, they decided to open the doors again once the weather did clear back up. And luckily for them, everybody came back. Because I feel like sometimes people get a bit annoyed. I think if it's in the UK, people maybe feel like they got, you know, it was that like kind of spit in the face and they just go home. But I feel like there, people probably decided to come, you know, come back, give them another chance. We're out here anyway. So that was obviously good to see. But I'm definitely going to add it to my list of places to go because it's a basically a one day festival um you know from the 8th of july obviously i've missed it stone techno festival um the lineup is pretty sick oh no it's two day festival actually saturday and sunday the lineup is fucking awesome everybody i'd like to see in terms of d dan um a anita gigola um imogen Fran freddie k mohem uh, Justin Perry, back to back, and Leah Ochi is a big one I'd like to go see. Patrick Mason, of course, Rod Had, Salomone, Stephen, St uh, Stephanie Sykes, I'm a big fan of. Hector Oaks, who I love. Um, Narcy, so obviously, who I mentioned there. Hector Oaks, back to back with Helena Half. All amazing people playing, who I'd love to go see play, obviously. And um, yeah, it looks really cool, to be completely honest. And it's definitely something that's kind of out of the way. It's not in the usual places that I always am in, in terms of Berlin and shit. It's in Essen, a little bit different from what I'm usually used to. And yeah, I am definitely will end up kind of figuring out a way to get there sometime next year when it's on again. 
there's actually a video here from what you call it 2022 actually which is a decent little after movie which i actually will play here that kind of shows what went down last year to kind of give me a kind of an idea of what i can expect if i do end up going there this time next year <laughs> I did feel the vibe of many old coal miners that have dug deep into the earth for the world. Oh, is that what it is? It's, um, it's a coal mining factory, an old disused one. It looks fucking incredible, to be fair. There's what looks like a fucking Ferris wheel outside of it also, which is odd. So I'm not really sure what's going on there, but I just love the site. And this is a thing that I really love about places that aren't the UK. These places exist because we have something similar like print works. But for some reason... The fucking local government decides, hey, we want to get rid of print works and we want to build some shiny new fucking flats or some nondescript, same old fucking steel and glass co-working space that no one's going to fucking work out of. But they don't want to leave a very unique looking club inside of a print factory that's also been kind of turned into a little cultural hub that's bringing loads of new business around that area. Nah, let's just burn it all down and build fucking nonsense flats. These type of places still exist in parts of Europe. You can do these sort of festivals, these sort of events, and local governments um, see the utility in you bringing extra people to that area that usually is dead, doesn't have any kind of business going on there every summer to make a bit of extra money as a local economy and that shit. That's really important. I love it. It looks really cool. To find resources for us to heat our homes. Breathing through celebrating everything good in the world. The place is insane. There's a lo loads of like little hidden corners as well, which I like. There's no other place like it in the world because Man, like that it's shit. like a national heritage site right and the whole place just it just breathes techno i think in this place with the industrial vibe thank you for the invite third room and then my guys and now the kids just want to rave I had a good expectation, but when I arrived, uh, this industrial like kind of it. area totally made sense with the stone techno project, the music that comes behind the, the name. There were so many sounds to choose from. I mean, I could have made the 10 tracks out of it. I enjoyed a lot of the stone sounds and those kind of belly metallic hits. Yeah. I used this like a top line. A lot of nice percussive and almost uh, industrial percussive noise. They actually were very useful. Normally when you get a sample back, it's maybe 10% of it is great. The rest is not so great, but actually I was very inspired. I was able to fit it in really well. I played the track, it smashed it, yes. I mean, this place is unique in the world. Yeah, I've never seen something like this. It was my debut and it was incredible. The venue alone yeah, looks cool. is beyond. It's so many hidden corners, so many different floors. The energy was so crazy from the beginning till the end. I would love to have that again. Yes, of course, I would love to come back. Oh, no. I felt very responsible and also energized. This is the best and the most beautiful location I've seen in my life. And not even like as a DJ, like as a person. We had a fucking party. <laughs> The energy and the location is absolutely amazing. The location is really special. And I think that's so awesome because this is, this is the right place for techno music. The crowd was giving me so much energy, so I had an absolutely great time. An amazing thing I've never experienced before playing outdoors, but yet feeling like we were together in a club. Cool. When I was young, you hear about the rule for beat, but uh, I never saw it up close like this. It's really impressive. First time I played in the World Heritage site, so that's one to tick off. Um, the energy of the people is really nice. I think also where Essen is positioned in Europe, then they get a lot of people from the surrounding areas, which I think is really cool. 
multicultural in fucking Germany means loads of different types of whites. <laughs> I fucking love it. Every different type of Caucasian is multicultural. I fucking love it. <laughs> we are multicultural. We have people here from Turkey, <laughs> Romania, <laughs> Hungary, Czech Republic. We're multicultural. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna I'm, I'm be there holding it down for the icy freeze. Boom, 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 boom. Nigga, nigga. I'll be, I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll be there. No matter what. Next year, I'll be there. But yeah, it looks fucking awesome. I'm definitely gonna check it out. If you haven't seen it before and you are not aware of it, I really do recommend it also to you. I'm sure most of you probably are aware of it because you're way more cooler than I am. But definitely check it out. Um, you know, hosted by the Third Room guys, Stone Techno Festival. Um, next year, obviously, this one already we missed. Um, usually it's on a Saturday and a Sunday. Um, it looks like maybe the first weekend of July. That was pretty sick. Um, and I'm all for it. It says here for the, for the first one, it says after hard months work and extensive planning, the third room and Ruhr Museum are finally ready to proudly present the full lineup of Stone Techno Festival. Two days with 50 outstanding artists on four super intimate floors at one of the worldwide most unique locations, the UNESCO World Heritage Zovolerin. We're expecting ravers from all over the world and we can't wait to bring them all together at Europe's biggest coal mine complex. Oh, it's a coal mine complex. Interesting. Save your tickets now because sales are running fast and we predict to be sold out. Okay. It's a coal mine complex. That's what it's called, right? UNESCO World Heritage. Let's see what Google says about this place. Industrial complex in the land of Nordheim, Westphalen or something. That's what it's called. Um, let's see it here. Courtesy of fucking Wikipedia. What does Wikipedia say about it? Oh, it looks very, very, very cool there. Um, Zolverland Coal Mine Industrial Complex is a large former industrial site in the city of Essen. The first coal mine on the premises was founded in 1847 after the coal mine activities took place in 1851 until December 1986. God damn it. For decades, starting in the late 1950s, the two parts of the site, the, how do you say that? Zolverin, Zolverin coal mine and the Zolverin cooking plant erected, haha, <laughs> get it, erected, um, in 1957 to 1961, closed on June 30th, 1993, ranked among the largest of its kind in Europe. Shaft 12, built in the new objectivity style, was opened in 1932 and is considered an architectural and technical masterpiece, earning a reputation as the most beautiful coal mine in the world. Because of its architectural testimony to development of the heavy industry in Europe, the industry complex was inscribed in the UNESCO World Heritage List in December 2001. So that's why it still exists, see? That's what we need. Somebody needed to put fucking print works as a world heritage site, then maybe they wouldn't have fucking turned it into fucking, you know, what you call it, um, startup fucking co-work spaces. We don't need any more of those. Fucking hell. Um, and it's one of the anchor points of Europe's root of the industrial heritage. Okay, cool. Fairly awesome. Nice to see. Definitely going to go there next year. Adding that to my list of things to go to on top of Melt, on top of Dre Molin, on top of Houghton. I've got so many things to fucking go to. All I need to do, all I need to do is start making a lot of money. When I start making a lot of money, once I start making fucking, you know, 10 grand a month, you're going to start seeing me going so many places. My vlogs are going to be crazy. I'm going to be fucking like Casey Neistat. Hey guys, here I am in Bora Bora investigating the local hogs. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm going to be on. I'm going to be on Bora Bora time. I swear to God. Bora Bora time.